In this video, I'm going to demonstrate some of the new functionality that was added for cubic spline interpolation in version 2.7 of Data Curve Fit Creator add-in. A Data Curve Fit Creator add-in is a piece of software that adds curve fitting and other data related extra functionality to Excel. You can download Data Curve Fit Creator add-in from www.srs1software.com and it comes with a fully functional 30 day trial so it's easy to download and try out. So to start off, before I get into the cubic spline uh, enhancements that were added to this version, I'm going to mention a few quick UI changes that were made to this version. First thing, we added a data curve fit creator uh, ribbon group to the ribbon bar in Excel. And uh, it's, uh, it's right here. And it, uh, it has a lot of the functionality that was in the previous uh, old style menu in previous versions. It did add a couple new things though. Uh, a give instant feedback form where you can send instant feedback to the development team and also a check for updates uh, button there. Now another uh, change that was made, quick change that was made, I'll mention is the data curve fit creator function group that was added to the function wizard. We now have a, we now have a custom function group where we put all our functions uh, from in the function wizard. So now getting uh, to the changes for the cubic spline. So there were two main changes that were made. First, we added a couple new optional arguments to the cubic spline function. The first uh, was spline style, and that just uh, gave the option of calculating the spline a little bit different, so the curve looks a little bit different, and I'll explain more about what that means and show you that in, in a little bit. And next is extrapolation style, and that just controls how uh, extrapolated values are handled by the function. First, th and I'll, I'll mention also, these are all optional. You don't have to use these, uh, so you, don't, you don't have to set these to anything. If you just ignore them, then everything will work fine and you'll get the same results as the cubic spline in previous versions. But this just adds a couple new options in case you wanna uh, use them. And the next, thing that I'll be showing you is there's a new function called cubic spline extra vals and what that does is it returns the slope and or the uh, function coefficients at any point in the cubic spline interpolation and I'll show you what uh, how that works and and what that is as well so to get started to demonstrate this stuff I'm going to I'm going to uh, add some dead some data to this workbook that we can use for interpolation. I'm going to make two cells here, source X and source Y. I'll just put some values in here. I'll just put these these values in here. And now this is my source data that will be the source for the uh, spline. And now I'm going to add some sampling data. I'll call it sample X and then the resulting spline Y that you get from these sample values. And my source data went from one to four, so why don't I make sample values from zero to five with increments of 0 0.1 so we can see, so we can see how the uh, spline actually, uh, actually behaves, how the cubic spline actually behaves. So I'll copy this down and we'll only go up to, to five over here. And now I'll calculate the spline for each of these points. Go to the function wizard, cubic spline, set my source data, I'll hit F4. In order to make that a absolute reference, you notice the dollar signs. Do the same for the source Y values, and then I'll set the new X value. and that's all I need to do for now. And you notice the two additional optional arguments that I mentioned about. I'm going to leave those blank for now just to show that you don't really have to set those if you don't want. So I'm going to just uh, copy this down so I have my spline values. And now I'm going to go and I want to plot my plot this so that we can see, get a better idea as to what what's going on there. So first I'll plot my source data and I'm just going to just 
I'm just going to very quickly uh, I'm just going to very quickly go and uh, try to make this a little bit easier to see make it stand out a little bit more and now I'm going to go and try and add to the plot my spline interpolation data so I said add new data set I'm going to set the X and Y values here and so this in yellow is my spline my spline data set and I'm going to let's say that I I don't think I really want to have dots I just want to see a line because this is going to represent the shape of my interpolation curve so I think it will look a little bit nicer like this and so that's it so I've got my spline curve my cubic spline curve like this if I change the input values a little bit you can see the curve changes and now I want to focus on these two new optional values I'm going to put a at a place in the workbook where I can set these values uh, there's spline style and then extrapolation style I'm gonna go and let's say I'll set the the values in these two cells here now I will go back to my spline function and I'll add references to those cells so spline style I'll go to this cell make it an absolute reference and extrapolation style I'll go to this cell make it an absolute reference and I'll say OK and you notice that the first thing that happens is it says error and that's because I haven't put any values in here yet and actually the error explains uh, what the uh, you know why it's giving an error but I'm gonna put some default values in here for now and I'll copy this down and the curve didn't change because these are default values and uh, and so if you use the default values or if you don't put any values in at all then you get the same results as you did in previous versions with the cubic spline so now let me explain what is the spline style well the way that a cubic spline is calculated a third order polynomial curve is <clears throat> is calculated in each segment of your source data and then additional constraints are added obviously the last point in this uh, in this range has to equal the first point in this range and if you want it to be smooth then this the slopes at the, at the at the places where the where the ranges intersect are going to have to be equal as well and that's how a, a spline a cubic spline is calculated now that is enough to calculate the spline almost that you have to have a couple additional constraints in order to actually solve the equations and and that's where the spline style comes in what was used before and what the default is is what they call a, a natural spline uh, assumption which is the additional argument the additional assumption is that at the endpoints the second derivative of the curve is zero and that's what they call a natural spline assumption the new when it, well in this new version we add the option to use a different assumption as well and the name of that second assumption is called not a not and what that what that uh, way of calculating the spline is is it's an assumption where you set the third derivative of the second to last and last points to be equal and the third derivative of the first and second uh, points uh, segments of your of your source data to be equal so that's just another constraint that you can put on to get a little bit of a different looking curve and in case you want to try something different and get a different looking curve I added that option so if I go back also to the function wizard and I look at cubic spline and I actually I'll go over here and go to the function wizard if you put the cursor inside next to where it says spline style it tells you what the options are right here and the way that you uh, input values for the spline style and extrapolation style options are 
you can either put the index of the option that you want or the text of the name of the option. So in this case, for spline style, there are two options. Option 0 is natural spline, and number option 1 is the not a not spline. So you could type in, if you want natural, you could type in 0 or the word natural, or if you want the not a not option, you could type in 1 or not a not. So, yeah, that's that's how the spline style works, and if I change the spline style now, you can see that you get a little bit of a different looking curve. It's not a big big deal, but you can you can try it out with with different sets of data and see how uh, see the effect on different sets of data. But it, you ju it's just giving you that additional option. Now for extrapolation style, the options are. Let me go back to the function here, and you can see that the options are zero, which is spline extrapolation, which just means continue the curve. Whatever the curve is, continue it when you're extrapolating. Uh, or option number one is linear, which means just continue the curve along as a straight line. Or number two means none, is none, which means no extrapolation. Just return blank values when you're outside of your source data range. Again, you can, you know, for, for what you want, you, you can try either one, but uh, if I put in different options, put in one, you see that this suddenly moves to being a straight line as opposed to being a curve where extrapolation is happening. And extrapolation, just make sure we're on the, you understand, is the data range here goes from one to four, so extrapolation is all the cubic spline values that are calculated for everything below one and above 4, below your lowest value in your source data and above your highest value in your source data. So if I set that to back to 0, you see that the extrapolation area, it, the curve changed a little bit there. Now if I set it to 2, you notice that all the values go blank below 1, so 2 means no extrapolation. And again, if I, I, could, I could also put in, type in the name of the uh, extrapolation style. So I'll type in spline there instead of zero. If I type in zero, you see there's no change because spline is the same thing as zero. And if you type in something wrong, you, you'll, you'll get an error message and it'll say that it's an incorrect, invalid value. So that's, that's really how the new values work, the new, the new options. Next, uh, let me show you the cubic spline extra vals function and how that works. So that can return, as I mentioned, the slope and or the spline uh, function coefficients. Now the slope is a single value and the function coefficients, it's a third order polynomial, so that's four values. So if you choose to get both of them, that's going to be five values. So let me go and highlight the destination cells where those where five values will go and go to the function wizard and choose cubic spline extra vals and I'm going to go and select the data again just like I did with the other cubic spline function new x value now here's where you say whether you want the slope returned or the coefficients or both and I'm going to say true to returning both. And last, you can also set the same optional values, spline style and extrapolation style here as well. So, so I'm going to do that. And set those values here. I say OK. Now also, since we're getting five values back, since if you're getting more than one value back from Excel, that's what they call an array formula and you have to do something special to get all the values back so you have to highlight all the destination cells put the cursor in the formula editor and then hold down control shift and while I'm holding those down I'm hitting enter and that gives me back all the values just like that so I'm just gonna label these uh, columns here remember this first value was the slope and then we had the four coefficients so I'm going to label the four coefficients, C0, C1, 
zero, C one, C two, and C three. Then I'm going to just copy these values down. And notice that the the coefficients are all the same. The coefficients are all the same up until two, and then from two to three, the values are the coefficients are different, and uh, and so forth. And that's because, as I mentioned before, the the way that the spline works, it calculates coefficients for each segment of your source data. So if I was going to calculate those out, I can show you what 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 those coefficients mean uh, now. And I'll I'll go and I'll calculate out. Again, it's a third order polynomial, and so I'll calculate out what the actual spline value is from these coefficients. So the the formula would be equals c0 plus c1 times x plus c2 times x squared plus c3 times x to the third. And I'll hit enter and you see that it's the same value, basically zero, as as we got for under uh, the cubic spline function. And note also that when you change spline style and extrapolation style, all the coefficients change accordingly. So if I said uh, 1 for the extrapolation style, I'm saying I want a straight line for, uh, for all the areas outside of the source data. And so you notice that in that case, it's a straight line. It's the coefficients uh, for the x squared and x to the third are now zero. So those are those are the coefficients, and um, and that's that's how you get the coefficients from the cubic spline extra valis function. Last thing I'm going to mention is the slope. I mentioned that these are the slope. This this is the slope at each point in the curve. So I can I'm going to grab the plot again and select data and let me go and add let me go and add the slope to the to the plot here just to see what that what that looks like I'm going to go and select my x values for the for the slope and then grab the y values for the slope Say OK and OK and now this is the in gray is a plot of the slope and I can go and format that again again I'm just going to go and set no set no markers and make it a different color and. I've got my curve here my, with my this is the the cubic spline and then this is the slope I can change values and see that the slope will change I can set this so that it's linear uh, when you're doing extrapolation and you notice when that happens the slope flattens out when you're doing extrapolation and so that's uh, that's pretty much it that's a uh, uh, you know those are the, that's an overview of the of the new features um, again, you can download the software from www.srs1software.com and uh, download it with a 30-day fully functional trial. And if you have any feedback, let us know, and we hope you enjoy the software. Thank you.